Hello, I'm Stone Samurai TV of the United Gamers of the Universe, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about the sequel to the hit book and movie, Ready Player One. So, spoiler alert, if you haven't read the book or are waiting for another movie, so grab some popcorn, and don't forget to click the like and subscribe button to be up to date with our new videos, and comment below of what you think of the video, so let's begin. Ready Player Two takes place not too long after the events of the first book. Our protagonist is single again. Artemis is doing her own thing. He's the CEO of Gregorius Games, and they further develop new Oasis technology and something Halliday was working on called Anoni, where you don't need gloves or a visor and upload like being in the Matrix. Sorrento is in prison, and Wade is challenged with a new Easter egg right after the sales of the new tech got to a number with a riddle unfolded. Now, when I got the book, I could not wait to read it because the first book was such a banger. I couldn't be happier with the movie when it came out, except for some of the changes, but that's the reader in me, and they had to change some things. So when you start reading the first few chapters, you're updated with Wade's life, his friends, a new Easter egg, and a project Wade set up with a ship he made in space called the Vonnegut, but we'll get to that later. Now, when Wade is dealt with the new Easter egg, he has to collect seven shards to restore the Siren Soul. Now, what is the Siren Soul? The Siren Soul is the first copy of someone in a virtual reality with all the memories and feelings of the original person, Kira. Ogden's wife. The reason why that is, is when you read the books, you would learn that Halliday had a big crush on Kira so much that he wrongfully scanned and copied her brain for the very first NPC copy of a human without her permission. Now, to me, that tricked me out like, wait, Halliday is a simp? And it makes sense since in the first book we're introduced to Halliday's with his good intentions and dealt with Halliday's bad intentions in the second book, giving us a retrospect view of the dark side to big inventors like Henry Ford who invented the modern factory by bringing the conveyor belt into the manufacturing system but was an anti-Semite who supported Hitler. No, for real. Look that up, that's true. But anyways, in Ready Player Two, after a bit into the book you learn that Sorrento has escaped from prison, Ogden Murrow has gone missing, and Halliday's NPC has gone rogue. In the book, they explain a new phenomenon called Synaptic Overload Syndrome, which only happens when you go more than 12 hours in an Oni right. And when the player in the Oasis starts noticing that they can't log out, slowly but surely, people start overclocking and getting stuck in some kind of purgatory. And the answer to why that happens is because Anorak, Halliday's NPC gets corrupted and takes back his magical robes he gave to Wade back in the first book and stops people from leaving and holding them hostage. And the only way they can stop it is collecting the siren souls to complete Kyria and deliver to Anorak. And if they don't, all the users who would suffer overclocking would eventually be dealt with slipping into a coma or worse, die in the oasis with an oni in limbo in the beginning of the book the ai copy of halliday was as normal as he was in the first one but in the second book the other side of halliday comes out like any other side to a person's personality we get to read about his obsession with kira and get to really learn about halliday and ogden's friendship as bumpy as it is in the books it got me curious now, I'm not saying Halliday is a bad character in this, but nobody is perfect, and the AI being corrupted kind of brings out that side in him that I think is very unique in this situation, and it makes it more impactful to me. Like, for some people, it can be hard to get over a crush and let go in the whole lore of it. Halliday did try to be a good friend because the situation was that even though Kira went on a date with him first, she did end up with Ogden and fell for him instead, you know? Now to get to know Halliday, you gotta remember that his character was antisocial. His character had mental disabilities and I don't think a lot of people that are fans of the movies would know that. But honestly, as a book reader, I'm glad I know that kind of fact. Like knowing Harry helped Ron clear out the gnomes in his backyard in the second Harry Potter book. So back to the book. In the previous book, it was established that Wade has a group with his friends in it called the High Five. Sort of like having a clan or guild, if you will, in this instance. In this book, there is a group of players that call themselves the Low Five to honor Wade and his group. and consists of players named Longren, Lilith, Wukong, 
Rizzo, and Castiger. To help out Wade in his journey with the Charze, he has them look for a weapon made by Ogden called the Dork Slayer. In case if Anorak goes rogue and to keep Serrano and Anorak off their trails, and it seemed to have worked as Wade gets the weapon later. So when Wade starts out to go find the Shards, he embarks with his best friends, Aked and Shoto. When they start looking for him, they are already spent some time in the Oasis before they realize Serrano put it on lock and makes the journey that much more difficult because they have less than 12 hours to get it done. When in the last book, it took Wade years to find the first Easter egg step and makes it that much more dramatic. Now, where is Artemis, Wade's ex? Well, she never put on an Oni. She never got stuck because, like a smart character, she stuck with the regular setup of a visor and gloves and helps out Wade in the outside world and in the business trying to calm things down. They end up bouncing around the oasis collecting the shards, but the most significant place they had to go was go to Prince's Mansion. And I'm not lying when I say this, but they are there for like three chapters. But in the end results, I like the tribute that Ernest Klein did for him and talked about his career. Even mentioned the time when Prince said something that got him in hot water and reminded me that we're all human and say a lot of stuff. But it did feel kind of long, and they not only go into his career history they got deeper into the early stuff and with his band and wade and ache are tasked to kind of kill them all as they're like fighting them uh shoto goes out a little bit early though but eventually like they do end up defeating them in the end so let me backtrack a little bit for you in the story it made things a lot more interesting because the oasis got corrupted it made all the NPCs go haywire and kill players for no reason like shopkeepers, quest givers, the cat and the light sitting down, celebrity NPCs, you name it. But it doesn't go unnoticed by Wade with the Matthew McConaughey NPC that gave him a ride to somewhere tried reaching out with tapping on the steering wheel trying to use Morse code. And the whole book, Wade really pieces things together very good in my opinion. And if it wasn't for his big brain, he wouldn't come on top of it in the end. And I feel that's the magic in Ernest's books. Now when really, when Wade finds things out where Ogden has been, he gets out the big guns. So to give clear context, apparently they were developing a security robot like something uh, out of Robocop to protect players while they have an Oni on to stop robbers right he uses one to rescue ogden but to his avail in the ensuing drama ogden gets hit with a bullet and also killing sorrento in the process during this time wade is starting to feel the effects on the oni very slowly but in the nick of time the low five came back with the dork slayer to help wade but in his state he could not go on and finish the job of destroying anorak leaving him watching from a window in castle anorak but no, who could? Ogden. He couldn't use a conventional rig. He had to use an Oni because of his weak estate. Even with the bullet in him, he was the only one that could fight Anorak as he never put on an Oni ever because he knew that as soon as you put one on, you are copied and made an NPC and put into a cloud for safekeeping. So for his wife and all that's good, he puts it on and fought Anorak. The last remnant of his best friend, and in the end, Ogden wins, but shortly after he dies from his injuries, the Oasis firmware kicked in and released all of the hostages with no repercussions of any side effects, saving a lot of people from potentially dying. When Wade comes back to the Oasis, he puts on his conventional haptic suit and starts repairing things. Since he got his robes back and resurrects everyone's avatar, including the Low Five, as they got destroyed in the ensuing conflict earlier, and for the reward, Wade gives them a billion dollars. He puts the Siren Souls together and brings back Kira's NPC and Ogden's NPC. In the conclusion of the book, Artemis gets back with Wade, Wade abandons the Vongat, and decides to have the ship leave Earth's orbit with all the NPCs, including his, Artemis's, Aix, Shoto's, everyone, a few mechanical suits for the NPCs to operate from inside of their own oasis, and even brought back Artemis' grandmother who got to get a copy of herself before she passed and made her NPC younger, basically making them immortal with billions of copies of people the Vonnegut set out to explore, set foot on a new journey to a habitable planet to one day populate. 
So now that we're getting to the end of the video, to answer the question of the title, is Ready Player 2 good? I say yes, but I do want to get out that I thought the time lapse for overclocking for Wade was put off and felt like it was kind of slowed down for like, you know, in the 10 minutes left to, you know, do heroic things. But in the end, I did like the book. I like that I got updated on where the characters left off from the first one. But to me, nothing beats the first one, and not to say the second book didn't deliver. I'm just that kind of fan that appreciates the stepping stones and look forward to more of his work. And I don't know if they're going to do a movie, but if they do, I'd be curious. But all right, that's all the time we have left for this video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to be updated with new videos. And don't forget to comment. I'm curious on how you guys felt about the book. If I left something out, let me know. If you want to watch more content, I got a new video on Tomb Raider on the box on the left. If you want to watch something older, go to the box on the right. But, but besides that, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And if you want to watch me live, I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash TV. Bye, y'all.